High in the mountains of Eritrea, clouds swirl like an ocean around the peaks and ravines that dominate the country's landscape. Throughout Eritrea's civil war, these mountains, which rise dramatically from the country's desert lowlands, were the scenes of dozens of battles. Once Africa's most industrialised country, war has left Eritrea's infrastructure crumbling. For 75 years, a railway built by Eritrea's Italian colonisers made the torturous journey through these mountains from the country's main port at Massawa to the capital, Asmara. The railways was completely uh, dismantled or destroyed during the war. For over 20 years, it was non-operational. In fact, there was only some traces of the, that the railway really existed, yes, by the time of independence, that is. When the Italians started the ambitious construction of the railway line in 1887, it would take them more than 40 years to complete the 360 kilometre line, with the track rising from sea level to 2,400 metres. Its construction was hailed as a major engineering feat. Today, three years after declaring its independence, Eritrea has begun an extraordinary project to rebuild this critical piece of infrastructure. Harnessing the sheer determination of its people, the Eritrean government is reconstructing the railway with no outside help. It is symbolic in the sense that it reflects the policy, the philosophy of the Eritrean government that we have to mobilize our resources first and foremost before we go around the world and ask for any help. At the rail workshops in Asmara, Debesai Zamu is part of a group of veteran workers recruited to help bring Eritrea's railway history back to life. <laughs> On a pension for 20 years, Debesai has been called out of retirement and is now in the cabin of the pride of Eritrea's rail fleet, a 1957 Krupp diesel locomotive. These veterans are the only ones who know how the trains work. Experience that must be put to use before it's lost. At the other end of the Asmara railway yards, 76-year-old Kardeli Gizahir and his colleagues are restoring the ancient steam engines that will form the backbone of Eritrea's rail fleet. The work is backbreaking and would challenge many men half their age. <laughs> The remarkable thing about this restoration project is that the work is being done entirely without the use of modern technology. In the electric workshop, parts are individually drilled and machined by hand. Outside, these 80-year-old sleepers are being oiled, ready for use again. But rebuilding these trains is only half the project. As yet, there are no rails for them to run on. In three days of fighting in February 1990, most of this once thriving gateway to the Horn of Africa was flattened. 
Eritrea's independence army pitted against the might of Ethiopia's Soviet-backed military machine. Soldiers fought hand-to-hand -hand as the Ethiopian Air Force rained napalm and cluster bombs on the battlefield. Hundreds died. Johannes Walder Jesus was one of the soldiers who helped capture the town. Masawa is unique uh, because it was the, 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 it was the beginning of the end of uh, Ethiopian rule over Eritrea. So the Derg must fight to the last and uh, we tried to, to liberate Masawa to the last drop of our blood. You know, we decided that already. So uh, the war, you can imagine how intensive, how hard it was. Uh, for us and for the Dergs itself. Dergs, of course, Ethiopian troops. The fall of Masawa was the turning point in Eritrea's independence war. The job of rebuilding this once thriving port now lies with the local mayor, Tuel Deandu. During the liberation, almost 90% of the city has been demolished. Uh, all the houses, the infrastructure of the roads, the lights, the water system, the drainage system, everything was destroyed. Uh, so to rehabilitate or to reconstruct it, the remains of the war, it's not uh, an easy matter. Project number one is Masawa's tiny trolley train. This represents the rebirth of the Eritrean railway system. Trundling along six kilometres of reconstructed track, students, workers and families use the train to travel between the town centre and the outskirts of the city. It is a small one. It works for the students and for the daily levels. It can help because it's too cheap. You pay only 25 cents. So it can give a service to the public. Along the route, women and children take advantage of the passing trade to sell hand-woven bags of salt. Now, a train ride like this might not appear much to most people, but it fills the Eritreans with pride. It is not its only material aspect of it or its uh, economic aspect of it, but uh, the fact that uh, the people are determined to, to rebuild uh, what existed and to expand it, to develop it, this gives uh, naturally the necessary uh, satisfaction, psychological satisfaction. Outside the city limits, the hard work of rebuilding the main line from the coast to Asmara is underway. But first, the precious rails and sleepers have to be found. The Ethiopian troops use it as a, as a trench especially the, the sleepers and uh, the iron bars, you know. It's used as a trench to protect from our, from our attack. Now, far and wide across Eritrea, gangs of workers are returning to the scenes of battle to retrieve their pilfered railway. All up, 169,000 of these steel sleepers have been dug from the ground. From here, these sleepers and rails will be hauled back to the railway track to be returned to their original use. It's here that you realise the difficulty of the task ahead. Every one of these nine metre long rails, each weighing a quarter of a tonne, will be straightened and carried into place by hand. Like the veterans in the Asmara workshops passing on their skills to the younger generation, it's the same for Zegai Zamu working on the track. Mr Zamu has been a track layer for 41 years. Uh, it's back-breaking work to bend into shape these 80-year-old rails so they can be used again. 
That's 26,000 rails in all for the journey between Misawa and Asmara. But the Eritrean's determination to rebuild this line on their own and virtually by hand is deeply rooted in their philosophy of self-reliance. During the war, we were having this principle of self-reliance. At this 30 years war, we have many experiences. Uh, and if we are not uh, self-reliant, then we'll be always to be waiting for donors, to be waiting for aid. So if you are going to wait for an aid, then you are not going to work. If you don't work, you can't change your uh, lifestyles, you can't change your economical situation. So far, it's taken more than a year to build the line, just 29 kilometres across the desert. But this is where the hard part begins, laying 90 kilometres of track through the mountains to the capital. It may seem an almost impossible task, but it's one the Eritreans refuse to shy away from. But the Minister for Transport is more pragmatic. It is true, it has been said that uh, it could be perhaps done or completed within two years, yes. But then uh, there are a lot of uh, factors, uh, natural and others, uh, which could uh, delay it by, by some months or by a year. But that's not very important for us. Yeah. By the time the train reaches this point at Enbakala, it's travelled 80 kilometres from the coast and risen 1,200 metres above sea level. But it's from here that the going gets really tough. In the final 38 kilometres to Asmara, the train will rise another 1,200 metres. And it's worth remembering that this entire line is being rebuilt by hand. Near the small village of Nefeset, we were able to drive onto the tracks which have been carved into the mountainside. As the line snakes its way through these mountains, it passes over 44 bridges and through 30 tunnels, the biggest some 400 metres long. The Eritreans hope this project will cost less than $10 million to complete, a fraction of what the Italians said it would cost to rebuild the line. The Italians, they say about uh, uh, 200 million dollars is needed without, without wagons and locomotives, even the, uh, the repair and maintenance uh, installations, only to, to, to repair the line. Huh? Who is going to pay for it? If we are uh, expected to, to, to transport with it less than half a million tons per year, you think it can be, pay for it? It cannot. That is why, uh, for the moment, modern uh, railway system in Eritrea is out of question. In the Asmara workshops, the railway veterans will continue to repair and recycle these old steam engines, knowing they still have 10 years of life in them. <laughs> Working with ancient equipment doesn't dampen the enthusiasm of these men who are giving the final years of their lives to see Eritrea's railway become a reality. <laughs> In two years' time, these trains, trapped in the graveyard of a 30-year war, should again be shuttling between Eritrea's main port and its capital. The Kandu people of Eritrea are showing the rest of the world what can be done with determination, self-reliance and very little money.